everybody, it's Adrian from Zanzas Toys, and this is going to be a pretty short video. But recently I, I was on the American Science and Surplus website, it's amazing. I've been getting their catalog since I was in high school, and if you haven't checked them out, you definitely should. And one of the things they have right now is these wind-up motors. So, uh, I'm going to open one so you can get a better look at it. The plastic is kind of shiny. So what we have is the typical wind-up motor, right? So. You know, you can wind it up, and it goes. And who doesn't like wind-up toys, right? I know I do. So, I've actually looked for wind-up motors in the past, and they're surprisingly hard to source online. But, at least for right now, American Science and Surplus has three packs of these for like a buck seventy-five, which is great. So I bought a whole bunch of them. And I definitely want to make some 3D printed toys that use these. But the first thing I wanted to do was to have some way to build toys around this shape, right? So the very first step in that was to make a 3D model of this motor. I went into FreeCAD, it was, it was pretty simple. I just started with the body of the motor. I, I designed it such that the center of the wheel was at the, the origin. And I wanted to do that because I figured when I start to actually use this and other things, I'm probably gonna care the most about where the wheel is. So. I might want to turn it up and not have the motor at something other than a straight horizontal angle because it doesn't really matter, right? All that matters is where the wheels are and where the outlet for the wind-up uh, crank is. So, yeah, I designed it all so, such that the wheels are at the origin, made it slightly more involved to get the body shape right, but it was, it was all in all a pretty easy sketch. So I sketched out the body, added in the wheels, and, uh, and then the crank. And that was pretty much it. I did make a second version of this though, which is a simplified version that's, that can be used as a to boolean out a cavity. So what I did for that was basically just the same thing. I went, I made a duplicate of the the first version, and I went and increased all the sketch dimensions by half a millimeter. So I, I found that about 0.25 millimeters on either side is a good amount of clearance. So just know that if you end up using these files. That's how much space you'll have. If you if that's not enough, you might want to just scale things up a little bit. So, and I also made it such that instead of having multiple cylinders to kind of mimic the actual uh, structure of the crank, I made just one large cylinder that's big enough to accommodate the whole crank. Right. So you can't just put the uh, the cat part through without disassembling it. Right. So. Yeah, so that's pretty much it for this video. I I haven't done anything to use these quite yet, but I thought it'd be nice to go ahead and, and make a short video and release the files so that as the whole time, as I'm working on making some stuff that uses these, you can be too if you want. So I'll have links down below to the files for both, for the STLs for both the sort of the model that kind of, you know, is, is as close to this as I could get it and the model that is a simplified version that's a little more appropriate for just boolean, 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 difference, for use in boolean operations. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, more to come soon, and as always, thanks so much for watching, and if you like this kind of stuff and you wanna see more videos about toys and toy making and 3D printed fun, uh, please like, comment, share, subscribe, all that stuff helps a lot and it's greatly appreciated. See you next time. Thanks a lot.